Apple announced a complete revamp of their versatile Mac mini computer. And the most visible difference is the size. You take a look at a Mac mini for over the past 10, 14 years, it looks like this. And now the new Mac mini looks like this. Now, this is just a paper Mac mini, but it's built to scale and it's about five inches by five inches by two inches compared to 7.7, 7.7, and 1.4 inches for the previous Mac Mini enclosure. There's a lot of new stuff in this Mac Mini, including the M4 and M4 Pro chips. Now, these are really powerful chips, first introduced in the iPad Pro M4 and in the recently introduced iMac and MacBook Pros. What's cool about these Mac Mini is that they have a base starting RAM of 16 gigabytes, so you don't have to spend $200 to go from eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes anymore. This is fantastic. And you'll see that the base level iMac is a tremendous value. In addition, they have three Thunderbolt ports in the back. And if you get the M4 Pro version of the Mac mini, these Thunderbolt ports are Thunderbolt 5, which have incredible transfer rates up to 120 gigabits per second. Thunderbolt 4 topped out at 40 gigabytes per second. What's also cool in the front is that you have two USB ports right here, as well as a headphone jack over here. And if we compare that with the previous Mac mini, the M1 or the M2, you'd have either two to four Thunderbolt ports, two USB-A ports, Ethernet, HDMI, and headphone jack as well. Um, no SD card slot in this little Mac mini M4 right here. So I've dropped a bunch of links down below in the description if you wanna see all the more gory details about specs, ports, and connectivity. Uh, right now though, I'm gonna talk about my experience with Mac Mini over the years and how I see myself potentially using the M4 powered Mac Mini in the future. Now, I've always had a soft spot for the Mac Mini ever since it was launched in 2005. This happens to be the 2012, late 2012 Mac Mini. But I never pulled the trigger on buying a brand new one until 2020 when the M1 Mac mini was released. I did get used ones on eBay or, for, or from family members to act as servers, a dual boot Windows PC, and a computer for my wife. And in my house today, I have a total of four Mac minis. So the aforementioned late 2012, I have a late 2014, and two M1 Mac minis. Now what's surprising about all these Mac minis is that they look almost identical from the front. So you can tell though that the late 2012 and 2014, they have this little infrared slot at the front. And then the M1 Mac minis just have a little power indicator in the front. But where you really can tell the difference is by turning them around and you see looking at the rear ports and connectivity options. So for the Mac mini late 2012, this one had a quad core 2.3 gigahertz Intel Core i7. And in some ways it was more powerful than the late 2014 model. So single core performance was a little slower than the later model, but the multi-core performance was much better. But from a connectivity standpoint, it had FireWire 800, a single Thunderbolt port, Wi-Fi was slow, and it could only be upgraded to macOS 10.15. In fact, I don't even use this computer as a Mac. I use it as a Windows PC using Apple's Bootcamp. There's a single game that I still occasionally run for Windows <clears throat> that I can't play on the Mac. So. I don't run it that often, but when I do, I have to spend like an hour or more just updating with all the Microsoft security updates. Uh, fortunately, I guess, or unfortunately, depending on if you're still using Windows 10, Microsoft is gonna stop releasing security updates on October 14, 2025. So you still have a year left to use Windows 10. Then you'll just have to upgrade to Windows 11. Now I received this particular Mac mini from a family member who's upgrading to a newer model, so I didn't have to pay anything. And this one has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD. So the second Mac mini that I have is the late 2014 model. This one only has a 2.6 gigahertz dual core Intel Core i5. That's quite a mouthful. And it currently functions as a home server for VPN, Plex Media, and Homebridge. It used to run my secure FTP server that I use with my wireless photography system. Now I'm using my Canon 5D Mark IV today as my webcam and my primary camera that I use for all my streams and YouTube videos. My main camera, still camera and video camera is my iPhone that I carry today right here. 
But when I was using the 5D Mark IV with this Mac Mini, I was able to take a picture with the camera and it would send that photo automatically over the internet to my home, wherein I had a bunch of Apple scripts or Hazel scripts that would upload the images to Dropbox. It would put them in at the time into Google Photos. It would also add them to my Apple photo library and even send myself an iMessage. So what was really cool about this workflow was that I had a very high end camera with great glass and everything. I could take wonderful pictures and then they would be on my phone and in my iCloud library pretty much instantaneously. And what's kind of sad is that in, we're in 2024 and photographers still have to go through so many hoops to get their images from their modern DSLR or high-end mirrorless cameras to these third-party services. It really isn't plug and play. You might have to connect to like a Wi-Fi device that's running on your phone or go through all these hoops to get it to, to work on a, on a computer or even just tether it using a cable. But I want to do this wirelessly. Now, there are some intriguing possibilities coming out. So Frame.io, which is owned by Adobe now, has a camera to cloud feature that is coming soon for a lot of cameras. It exists today for some cameras, but not for a lot of them. I think once support grows for this product, uh, it's possible that we will reach that kind of nirvana that I have in my head of take a picture with a high-end camera and instantly it's available on all my connected devices. Please, someone work on that. Now, my 2014 Mac Mini is running macOS Monterey, which is 12.76. One day I might run Open Core Legacy Patcher so I can upgrade this computer to run the latest version of macOS like Sequoia. And I bought this computer on eBay in 2016 for about $734. I think the new price at the time was $1,200 with all the upgrades, 16 gigs of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD. Now, if I didn't buy anything, I could have used that same money, $734, maybe put it in the bank, earn some interest, and now I could have had an M4 uh, Mac Mini just like this. But it served its purpose over the past eight years, and I've been pretty happy with it. Now, I own two Mac Minis with the M1 processor. And the first one I bought was my primary machine when I was moving from Intel to Apple Silicon. And I have to admit that this M1 Mac Mini was probably one of the best Apple computers they've ever made. Uh, had a good mix of modern and legacy ports, so two USB-A and two Thunderbolt 3. And most importantly, it ran silently. Uh, I can't count the times when I'd be working on my Intel MacBook Pro and then this, the fan would come on. And that fan, when it got going, sounded like a little jet engine. So I was really happy with Apple Silicon that their fan noise is much silent. Uh, I did replace the M1 Mac Mini with an M2 Max MacBook Pro. Uh, fortunately, just a few months before the M3 MacBook Pros were announced, and just today, the M4 Pro and M4 Max MacBook Pros were announced by Apple, uh, and they feature 24 hours of battery life. Now, I think the M2 Max MacBook Pro topped out at 14 hours of battery life, something like that, but I can't seem to get that much uh, battery life out of that computer. I don't know what I'm running on it, but never could get the kind of the stated numbers. So maybe upgrading to the M4 is in the cards in the future, or maybe I'll just wait for the M5 or the M6 MacBook Pros. The M2 Max is still a quite fine computer, uh, very fast and performant. When I bought the M1 Mac Mini, I also paired it with the expensive Apple Pro Display XDR. Uh, and that combination works surprisingly well. I even developed my mix effect application on this Mac Mini uh, when the pandemic was in full swing. So, you know, if you find a used M1 Mac Mini, it's still gonna be work just fine. I think uh, as long as you get 16 gigs of RAM, uh, it will be a fantastic uh, computer if you're on a budget. Um, what's great about Apple is that they are continuing to support the M1 series of computers, including Apple Intelligence. So. Uh, you can run Apple Intelligence uh, all the way back down to the original M1 Mac Mini. And today, my personal Mac Mini sits in a 9U rolling rack alongside all of my Blackmagic gear. You can watch a video that I linked down below uh, to see kind of this uh, rolling rack that I've set up. It has a ATEM 2ME Constellation HD, two HyperDex, a web presenter 4K, and an Ultimat. The Mac Mini is running macOS Ventura still for compatibility testing. Uh, I remote into it 
And I use Zoom ISO when I want to bring in multiple guests into my constellation when I'm doing streams. Um, and I said before, I access it using Apple Remote Desktop. And that particular Mac Mini is configured with 16 gigs of unified memory and a one terabyte SSD. Compare that to the Mac Mini that my wife uses, which also has 16 gigs of RAM, but only 512 gigabytes of storage. Now, I didn't think when I bought it that she would need that much space, one terabyte, but looking at her computer, her available disk space is about 20 gigabytes free at this moment. So maybe I'll actually swap the systems. I'll copy her stuff onto my Mac Mini with the one terabyte SSD and copy my system over to hers, which has 512 since I'm not really using it at the moment. All right, the new Mac Mini M4 is looks fantastic. Look how small and cute it is. Like I said before, visually it's a cross between the older and larger Mac Mini and the smaller Apple TV 4K. And I think the value provided by the base configuration is a steal. Because in the past, again, you had to pay $200 to get an extra eight gigabytes of memory to go from eight to 16. But now that comes for free at $599 or comes standard at $599. And I think 16 gigabytes is plenty for most people. Uh, users of the original Mac Mini, if you're upgrading from that, will appreciate the extra Thunderbolt port in the back. It's also Thunderbolt 4. And if you're an owner of the M2 Pro Mac Mini, you might miss that fourth Thunderbolt port in the back, but you will gain Thunderbolt 5 and only three Thunderbolt ports. And the extra bandwidth of Thunderbolt 5 might outweigh the lack of the extra Thunderbolt port. And you can always get hubs and Thunderbolt docks to give yourself more ports. I myself, with my M2 Max MacBook Pro, use a Sonnet Echo 20 Thunderbolt 4 Super Dock. Again, that's quite a mouthful because I have way too many accessories I need to connect to. So when I was running the M1 Mac Mini as my primary machine, I had Ethernet, Apple Pro Display XDR, I had an Elgato Stream Deck XL, I had a Rodecaster Pro, I had my ATEM, I had USB speakers. Sometimes I had to plug in a keyboard or a lightning cable to charge my Magic Trackpad. I had a lot of stuff. And even with all the ports on the back of the Mac Mini, I didn't have enough. So I had to get one of these docks to uh, get all the ports that I needed. So if you don't have that many things that you need to connect, you can also use something like a Uni USB-C eight port hub. I find these to be um, tremendous, very affordable. Um, you can get these over on Amazon and I'll put a link down in the description down below. As for the M4 Mac Mini, you know, the only computer I think I would replace it with would probably be the 2014 Mac Mini that use, that I'm using right now as my server for VPN, Homebridge, and Plex. Uh, I like the portability of the, of the MacBook Pro. I can take it with me to conferences and stuff like that. I can't exactly take a Mac Mini with me unless I had like an external monitor that I'm traveling with. Oh, I wouldn't replace the late 2012 because again, that's just a Windows machine. And the two M1 Mac Minis, are still being supported by Apple, like I said before. So Apple Intelligence still works on them. Uh, Mac OS Sequoia still runs on it. Um, and I expect it to continue to be supported for at least another three to four years. Apple typically supports a old hardware about seven to eight years. So we have until Mac OS 18 or 19 before I might have to replace them. So by then there might be an M5 or an M6 Mac mini which hopefully will remain the same price uh, and have better specs than before. Now, what about you? Do you have a Mac mini or have you used one in the past? Are you interested in getting the M4 Mac mini? It's so cute and small uh, and very versatile. Um, probably Apple's most versatile computer yet. Uh, if that's something that you're interested in purchasing, leave a comment down below or talk about your experiences about Mac mini uh, in a comment. If this is your first time watching this video, I hope you will subscribe to my channel. Talk a lot about Apple stuff. Uh, I just got a cat called Newton, named after the Apple Newton, not Fig Newton or Isaac Newton. I also do a lot of work with video streaming, video production tools like my app Mix Effect. Hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.